Hi everybody, this is Virak from Bionic Buzz and we are here tonight on a wonderful event but it's all about art. What art means to you? Because this event is about art. Yes, of course. Well, you know what I love about this is that art has no boundary. Art also has no politics. Today in this world that is so polarized, art is a wonderful thing to honor, a wonderful thing to celebrate. I'm very happy to be here because of that. I think I'm just being very lucky. My good friend is Joey, he's one of the organizers, and he said, I'm going to honor you. <laughs> so I'm very happy. Uh, actually, we don't really live in uh, Los Angeles. I, I live in Hawaii and China and New York, so but gives me a good excuse to come. You are very multicultural, so you connected to a lot of art, but what is your favorite to you? Well, quite obviously it's Chinese. My father was a painter, so if you ask me truly what my, uh, what my association with art is, that my daddy. <laughs> and what is art in your career? Well, I play the piano, so that is my, my, my art. Mine is musical art. Studied it like childhood, and this is how you feel that you can... Yeah, I, I studied piano when I was four years old. And I even, uh, I even studied uh, piano even when I moved to New York, uh, when I was in my 20s. So music is a very big part of my artistic life. Art is like music. It brings the world together. It brings people together. And we certainly need that this day and age, don't we? So by having a membership with the Los Angeles and Beverly Arts, it is a wonderful thing to bring in to your country, your state, these events so that people can be rewarded and acknowledged for their fabulous, fabulous contributions to the world. I can see a wonderful jewelry, what is a piece of art, <laughs> what you're wearing tonight. Please share something about it. Well, thank you. My earrings are Paloma Picasso, and I received these as a personal gift from her in New York City many, many years ago. And I chose to wear them today because they made me feel empowered. They made me look to the sky. They made me feel that we must raise our voices, raise our eyes, to make a better world. I also see a wonderful uh, jewelry on your chest, what you're wearing tonight. Uh, it looks very special and I know that you are a princess, so maybe it's connected. Uh, could you share something about that too? Yes. My title is Ratu Muta, Princess Karen Cantrell. And I was brought into the royal family of Raja Leopold Nisnani in Timur, Kupang, Indonesia. I had help with a lot of people, it takes a village to do great things, uh, to build an orphanage and a church for the Raja. And we also worked with Doctors Without Borders and many, many other organizations to help an orphanage as well. So the Raja was so kind to me and he brought me into his personal family and gave me the title Little Princess. Stephanie, we are here tonight in a very wonderful event, but it's about art and you are an artist. So please share something, some thoughts about it, that what art means for you, what was in, in your whole career, what did it mean for you? Well, art means everything to me. You know, I'm the founder of Sproul House Music, School of Artist Development. So it's an international school, so everything has to do with bringing people together, making sure people do what we need to do to have peace on this planet. So I am so excited about being a, um, you know, a winner of the uh, Icon Award. And uh, thank you for having me. And you know, power and influence is nothing without passion, purpose, and its impact unto others. And that's what it's all about, giving paying it forward. And that's what I do with my philanthropic work as well. Oh, I was so excited when Joey, Joey, my friend, when he told me, you are going to receive the award, the iconic award. So I said, thank you, Joey. I'm so blessed, you know, to have worked in this industry for so many years and able to pass it forward. Yes. 
If you look back into your career, what would you highlight? What was the most amazing moment for you? In my career, well, to perform at the White House on three separate occasions, three separate administrations, and singing for kings and queens around the world. So that, that was a major highlight for me, you know. <laughs> After this amazing career, what are the yeah, what are the challenges what you're looking for in the future? Well, the challenges we just kind of got through the challenges with this COVID, right? So that lockdown was two years of not doing anything. But you know what Stephanie Spurl did? I wrote an incredible song. So I have a new song out and the entitled that's good enough. Okay? Thankful. So I am just so thankful for everything that's happening to me and to my people around the world and to Laba and just thankful with everything that's going on in the world, you know? It's not all peaches and cream, but love conquers all. Hi, so I'm Harrison Engel and I'm, I'm on the board of Laba, the Los Angeles Beverly Arts International Arts Festival, and I'm so thrilled to be part of this event, our second Icon Awards. Uh, we're honoring some wonderful artists tonight. And we all believe, all of us involved in, in LABA, uh, believe that arts are an international language and a way that we can uh, bring people from around the world together through the arts. So uh, we all celebrate creativity and uh, we're delighted to be here. So this is a, quite a, a young award. This is the second one when you are going. So what was the, what was the inspiration to establish a award? Well, several of us uh, got together uh, uh, as any organization, uh, and I've, I've been part of a number of organizations, uh, several of us got together and we really talked about how artists, though, though there are many galleries and museums and so on, but there still are, uh, we felt that we were missing support groups for artists of all kinds, and even a way you know, uh, when you're an artist, you don't talk to other artists necessarily. It's very, you know, we're all independent, we're in our little worlds. So we thought that uh, Los Angeles Beverly Arts would bring, bring artists together. Well, thank you so much for uh, closing close to us art with this award and with this festival. And uh, thank you and congratulations. Nice to see you. Hi, my name is Paul Otteson. Uh, I work in the, in the movie business, uh, producer of sound. Uh, and uh, in front of you, you say that we are uh, you know, war tonight, I think 2011, we met her in Shanghai during the Shanghai Film Festival that she's involved in as well. Sound mixing, is it arts or engineering? What is it more? Well, there's, uh, there, it's, it's both. You have to technically know what you need to do, what tools to know what you need to do. Much like a, maybe like a, a painter need to know what brushes you need to know, how you mix the paints and stuff. But eventually you see that painting, the same when a, in the movie, you need to know what tools you need to tell the story in the, in the best way. So, but the technical aspect I think most people can learn, but the creative part is something that a lot of times someone have or someone that don't, like I can't paint, and I, try, I would love to paint, I just can't. And, uh, and then sound have been my thing to help to tell the story through that, but it was you know, mixing music and a lot of, you know, uh, you know, creative process of that. So I would say creative is the more important part of what I do. You already have three Oscars uh, for your work. And, uh, this is Oscar week. So how, how do you prepare for this week? Well, you know, we, uh, I'm not up for anything this year, but we uh, we involved with we a lot of screenings. So we, we have a lot of friends that are being nominated and so on. But uh, this year we're going to stay home and watch it from home. <laughs> Do you have a personal favorite? You know, there's, there's a lot of movies that I like and there's a lot of aspects of movies that I like, maybe for different reasons. I don't have a clear favorite, but there's always a lot of good movies that make you think about life, maybe change your life and something you just enjoy. But I, I love movies since a uh, little kid and being involved and at this high level has been just so great and, and, and rewarding for me. I'm very honored to be here today as a presenter. Yes. So, what is your uh, connection with the LABA, with the International Arts Festival? Have you ever attended before, or this is your first? 
Uh, this is my second time. The first time I was an award winner. So Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. And uh, I am a filmmaker. So I'm also a musician and a producer and also a composer. It's a pretty young festival and, and award ceremony. Yes. Uh, last year was uh, also in this place, but it, uh, it's much smaller um, than um, group of members because of the COVID and everything. Um, I just want it because I'm an artist. I want to support any international arts and I'm a, you know Asian so I come from China. So that is the goal for me to bring my music or our art goes to the world. Could you share something about your, your uh, art? So what type of music uh, you are making? What is your filmmaking career about? I'm playing a traditional Chinese instrument, it's called Arhu, and because of that, it's a Chinese instrument, so play Chinese music. However, when I moved to America, um, we started to involve with the concerts, with, the, you know, like symphonies, orchestra, and then movies. So I recorded for like a Passion of a Christ, um, members of Gisha, and Anna and King, so, so on, uh, and uh, also like uh, uh, Star Wars and all those. It's a different character. Become as making my music become as more like a world music instead of only Chinese music. So that's why I think I'm fitting in this international arts. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by, and please share with us uh, who do you, how can you, how can we find you on Spotify or somewhere your music. Um, my music, you can find it um, in many other places like a, like a, um, YouTube and iTunes, or, or mostly now is it's a soundtrack. So I just did a, a Turning Red and I had a, my solo in there, yes. I'm Oceana Rain Stewart, nice to meet you. What brought you here tonight, Oceana? I've been nominated for an Icon Award. Please share something about this nomination. How was it when you got to know about it and uh, what is it for exactly? Oh, I was extremely, I was very excited. Um, there's a lot of wonderful talent here, all deserving of awards. And so when I was nominated, it was thrilling because I spent a lifetime pursuing my life, at least, <laughs> pursuing the fine arts and sculpture in particular. So you are an artist. What art means for you? Can, do you have a, like a very, you know, a sentence as you can uh, express what art means for you? For me, in my art practice, I work with the human condition. So that means that I'm particularly interested in interpersonal relationships and humanity and how humanity is affecting life on Earth. And through this adventure of my series, multiple series representing life on Earth, um, I've been invited to ex have for an exhibition um, on the moon. And so I will be one of the first female artists to have artwork on the moon starting as early as this June and there'll be three different missions. The third mission will be attached to um, a, a rover, a NASA rover called the Viper, and they will be searching for water. And my artwork will be attached to that, along with other artists as well. But this is a collection of artwork that um, is, is female and male. However, it will be the collection that will include the first female artist with artwork on the moon. So, but when, when did you, uh, when did you felt first that you have a passion to art? Well, I, I grew up in a, an artistic family. Both my parents are artists and my grandparents were artists. And so my mother, um, in her studio, art studio, she was a painter, is a painter. Um, she would basically, for babysitting, set me up with my easel and some clay, you know. And so as a little girl, I have, I have photographs of me at two years old sculpting clay. This is something that I've always done. Um, sometimes I feel like I express myself even better went through my work. Please share your social media with us. Of course. So um, it's uh, Oceana Rain Stewart, and uh, you can search for me on all social medias. Um, on Instagram, it's Oceana Rain Stewart underscore sculpture, 
and on my website it's oceanarainstewards.com. Thank you so much and congratulations for your award. Yeah. My name is Jim Dacient and I'm a professor of art history at Point Loma Nazarene University. So you know a lot about art. <laughs> Please share something about it, what art means for you. Well, the arts are my passion in life, and one of the reasons I've dedicated so much time to the arts is it's about critical thinking, learning more about yourself, and engaging with art in intelligent and reflective ways. So it's why I teach, it's why I write about it, and why we're here to celebrate it tonight. So you are connected in the other way, because we met already a lot of artists tonight, but you are on the other side who are analyze art. Um, what do you think about this uh, uh, international festival? So you've probably seen a lot and you know where the Icon uh, Awards going. Maybe you also involved as a jury, did you? So please share something about it. Sure. Well, the Icon Awards tonight are a really unique time to celebrate uh, incredible artistry, some artists that have had a, a big impact in Southern California and beyond. And so I'm thrilled as an advisor and a contributor and a supporter of the arts to celebrate these individuals tonight. Did you, what was the selection uh, process? Could you share something about that one? Yeah. The selection process for each of the artists involved gathering names from important influencers in the art world. Uh, those names were submitted to the LABA Board of Directors, they reviewed them, and then there was a vote on who would receive the Icon Awards tonight. Hi, my name is Baby Mounter. And you are here tonight because? I'm here tonight because I'm performing. I play the Chinese zither called Gu Zheng. I am a musician and a composer. Can you share something about this a little more? Okay, so Gu Zhong, it's an instrument has over 2,500 years of history and has a wooden body with the 21 strings on top and you pluck with your fingers and I've been playing the Gu Zhong for over 32 years and tonight I'm doing a more contemporary song, it's really fun, it's really energetic. When did you uh, recognize the passion in yourself that you want to play with this instrument? When I was about six years old, I saw a friend playing and I just fell in love with the instrument and I had to beg my mom for a month to let me to learn it. And after a month of begging, she realized I was serious. So she started to take me to private lessons. So I've been playing since. How long does it take to, uh, to learn this instrument? How difficult to learn? It's not difficult to start, but it takes a lot of practice and dedication if you want to be a master of it. So I would say if you want to just to try it, a couple months you can play a very simple tune. But if you want to be a master, it takes years of practice. Can we listen to you also on some, uh, some Spotify or somewhere? Can, you find, can we find you on the internet? Yes, definitely. My artist name is Bebe, B-E-I-B-E-I. -E -E -I. If you search me, you can find them online. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please share something about it. Why are you here tonight? Okay, um, I'm the uh, uh, managing partner, a managing attorney, and the founder of law office of Lisa Smith. And um, I'm very honored that and I'm very excited that my firm has been nominated for the LABA Icon Award. And uh, even though I'm an attorney, I'm very uh, passionate about the arts. And my firm has represented many large operations in various disciplines, including the arts. And we have successfully uh, represented famous actors, uh, producers, directors, um, singers, dancers, and artists uh, from the US and the China. Uh, we have made important contributions to cultural, economical, technological, and artistic exchanges between China and the U.S. Um, I'm very thankful uh, to the LABA um, ICON Award Committee to give us this um, opportunity to, um, to have uh, nominated for this award. And I hope this recognition can serve as an inspiration uh, to others in the field so that we can all love art and uh, contribute, uh, make contributions to the art industry and... Zara-san, nice to meet you. 
very nice to meet you. What brought you here tonight? I know it's art, <laughs> but what else? Well, basically, I think what I am one of the nominee person, and uh, but besides that, and uh, I'm coming over here as a student for learning about more um, activities and the related to art educations and um, you know every every people's and behind the scenes yeah so I'm very happy to be here what was your first reaction when you when you know about it that you gonna nominate for this award oh, my first my first impression is I'm I'm not an artist and how come how come and I I've been nominated um, and then later they explained it to me because uh, um, I I was sitting on several trustees for a museum and also for um, library so that I think that's the reason I'm kind of related to art and also um, I was the committee of the Benali uh, in Venice so that that's that's one of the reasons, I guess. <laughs> and what art means for you personally? Uh, what art means for you personally? Well, actually, art to me is a very broad, it's a very, very broad uh, meaning, including civilizations, including history, including the most upscale we, we, we can have Pokemon, and including, of course, visual arts, and the paintings, it's, it's everywhere. Actually, when we sit and when we talk and everything, be, it's, there, there is the art, yeah. Uh, so nice to meet you tonight. Uh, please share something about what brought you here. What is your connection to the Laba? Great, well thank you. Uh, Princess, Diana, uh, Princess uh, Karen invited me to be here tonight. I'm a, representing the United Nations Association of the USA. Uh, I'm a past president of the Southern California region and uh, that's how I happen to be here tonight as a representative of the UNA USA. And we have uh, chapters across the country. We work to uh, educate the community about the important work of the UN and try to make a difference in the world. That sounds fantastic. Thank you. Uh, what does art mean for you personally? Well, art, of course, is a great expression for, you know, it's, it's the universal language uh, that uh, people can appreciate from all cultures, uh, the beautiful art that comes out of every culture, and a way to bring the world together and realize our similarities through art. It's a beautiful opportunity to realize our similarities. Great. Well, I have a project called Conversations for Peace. I started it a couple of years ago. I have 13 episodes up on the conversationsforpeace.com website. And the intention is to give people around the world an opportunity to express themselves and be heard and realize that wherever you are, whether you're in Ukraine or Spokane, Washington or, or Dallas, Texas, that we are really all the same. We're all just looking to survive, put food on the table, take care of our families, educate our kids, and stay healthy. And so the, pop, the opportunity for Conversations for Peace is to be able to express that and people everywhere to realize that we really are all the same. Probably tonight you have, uh, I mean not tonight, probably you have a lot of work now in this project because uh, we're living in a reality, what no, I wouldn't call it peace. So uh, share something about it. Yes, just yesterday we did a live event on, on the web, uh, giving people, we had a couple dozen people expressing their views uh, about what it would take for people to get along and why the issues in, uh, in the world, especially what we're seeing uh, on our screens today out of, uh, out of Europe, out of Ukraine, uh, you know, an opportunity for all of us to realize that, that uh, this, doesn't, this doesn't work. In 2022, to have this kind of anarchy and this kind of chaos going on, this kind of murder and mayhem, we already had the biggest number of refugees on the planet before this event took place. Now we have millions more. And it just isn't right, it doesn't work. And we have so much more opportunity and possibility on this planet. There's plenty of food. For anybody to be hungry is ridiculous. And so there's really a great opportunity for all of us to come together and find a way to make a difference and bring the world together, not to continue to push it apart. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.